Hello and welcome to GitHub Checkout. Our topic this week is GitHub code scanning, and my guest today is Justin Hutchins. Justin, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Justin Hutchings. I am a staff product manager here at GitHub. I've been working on our security team for about two years, and I've been working on our code scanning product for about a year since we made the uh, acquisition of Semmel. Um, sorry about that. You can hear my cat trying to join in. Um, yeah, I hope he makes a guest appearance. That would be cool. <laughs> he could. He could. He's a he's an ornery little guy. <laughs> um, yeah. So code yeah, scanning yeah. is is fantastic. You know, I, I said we've been working on it for about a year. We made an acquisition last fall um, of a company called Semmel that had been working in this space for a long time, and uh, you know now we we all work together as one big happy family in GitHub. All right, that's awesome. So I do know we went GA with code scanning just a few weeks ago, um, but I know some folks might not even know what the feature is all about. So do you mind telling us about that? Sure. So code scanning is sort of as a platform piece um, for GitHub. It's how we integrate static analysis security testing uh, tools. And so the way you should think of that is when you write your own code, there's a good chance you'll introduce a vulnerable pattern. These things happen all the time. And code scanning makes it really easy by integrating with your CI system and integrating with your GitHub repo to show you any places where you might have made mistakes and incorporated any sort of common uh, failures. We do this, uh, as I said, during your CI run. We expose those results in your pull requests as well as in your repo and the security tab to help make sure that you understand these things before they make it into your production branch. So just need to go into your repository and enable a particular action that right runs code scanning and then you're all set? That's right, yeah. If you go to the security tab uh, on any public repo, you'll find a button that says set up code scanning and you'll get a selection of options from us and our marketplace partners that do code scanning analysis. So CodeQL is our first party offering, but there's also a, a whole slew of options from partners that do things like container scanning or infrastructure as code scanning, or even scanning other languages that we do not. That's very awesome. So you mentioned CodeQL, and I know CodeQL is kind of standalone in a family of static code analysis tool because it's a, its own programming language. So um, can you talk a little bit about what's so special about CodeQL? Yeah, you know, I mentioned that this was all an acquisition and, you know, it's interesting to think back CodeQL was actually developed by a professor and a bunch of the PhD candidates at the University of Oxford in the UK. And they spun it out and they created a company and they had this amazing data flow analysis system. And it turns out when you have a system that understands how data flows through different programs, it's extremely powerful for security. Um, and they built out an entire programming language to allow you to go and specify queries to go and look for certain behaviors. You know, so if you're looking for data that comes from a user input that goes straight into a database field, you know, that's a classic SQL injection vulnerability. But those could be hard to spot sometimes if you don't know that, you know, code, you know, seven classes away is actually making its way all the way through unchanged into your SQL statement right here. And so those are things that are really hard to spot, but they're extremely high impact in terms of what kind of security vulnerabilities they can cause. And so I do know that um, basically CodeQL actually only highlights things when they're in use. So if I just, you know, do something like a SQL query that takes a parameter, but it's not coming from the outside world, that is fine and it's not going to get flagged. But if that parameter is actually somewhere like four functions up the chain is used in the user input, then it's going to flag it. So do we see that it kind of reduces the false positive on positives on the static code analysis? Yeah, that, that's certainly our goal is to make sure that whatever we present you is as real as it can be. And so we do the a process that we call threat modeling internally, where we think about all of the different places that data could come from, and we come up with a model for what that kind of data is, whether that's, you know, from a network endpoint, did it come from an HTTPS source or an unsecured source? We look at what kind of libraries, um, you know, data flows to. And so we, we end up being able to categorize with much higher precision um, what kind of data you're dealing with and how it's going to be consumed on the other side. Um, and this is a, it's an iterative process. 
one of the things that's beautiful about CodeQL and the queries we use is they're all open source. So if you go to github.com slash github slash CodeQL, you'll see all of the security queries that we actually use in the product um, are there. And if there's a scenario that we got wrong or that needs to be more precise, you know, you can set as a PR and, and we're happy to look at that. So that's fantastic. And it kind of goes very much with the GitHub approach to everything, right? Open source it, have community contributions, build a community around this, and have everybody help everybody build better software. Um, so we've talked about the feature for a little bit, and I'm really excited to see a demo uh, of how it actually works. Yeah, let's do it. Let's um, pull up code scanning. You know, one of the best ways to think about code scanning is actually just to go through the setup process here. So I have a repo. Um, this is a template that I have that has some vulnerabilities in it, um, but I haven't configured code scanning on it before. Um, and so I'm going to pop over to the security tab and you'll see I have a set up code scanning button. And you'll see exactly what I mentioned before. You can see CodeQL right here at the top, um, as well as a bunch of um, products from marketplace partners. And this set is going to change depending on the languages that are in your repo. We tailor that to what's actually applicable to you. So, you know, if you're a JavaScript repo, you're not going to see Breakman for Ruby analysis because it, it just wouldn't make sense. Um, oh, that's really cool. Yeah. So we'll go into CodeQL and we actually have a workflow that's set up already. And, you know, most of the time you don't need to make changes to this at all. We detect the languages you use. We detect um, your default branches. And, um, you know, we auto build most projects. Um, if you're using like a, you know, a C or C++ project and you're using an exotic build system and you don't have a make file, there's a chance you'll have to come in here and make some small changes where you, you swap out the auto build and you, you know, run whatever commands you would normally run to build it. Um, but most users, um, you know, this just works for. Um, in this case, this I know will work just right off the bat. And so I'm going to commit it directly to our default branch here. And so when you do this the first time, what's going to happen? Actions will pick this up. You can see that it's already scheduled the job um, and it's going to run through this workflow against my default branch. Now I'm not doing any code changes here. I, I won't demonstrate sort of the pull request experience. Um, but one of the things that's really clever that we do is we actually um, make sure that when you do a pull request and make changes to your code, um, even though all of the vulnerabilities for the code base exist in your pull request, we only flag things if they're net new in the code you wrote, which is a really interesting and, and awesome kind of thing. Because if you're used to running linters or other sorts of tools, you're probably used to seeing, you know, you commit to a new repo for the first time and uh, the maintainers might know about a hundred things that are wrong and they just know to ignore them because, you know, that's just the what you do. Um, but you're going to get a whole bunch of errors. And so we built this in so you don't see those errors the maintainers have been ignoring. You only see the stuff that you actually introduced, which is, uh, it makes it much easier to actually get the things fixed. That, that is like a really good thing because you can get 500 different errors on the first commit and that can be really frustrating with the static code analysis tools. So that sounds like an improvement. Um, so while we're waiting, you know, I should tell you what's kind of going on here. So. We initialize CodeQL, which is really just about um, getting the environment prepared. Um, this is JavaScript, so there's no build. It's a you know interpreted language. Um, and then when we did this perform CodeQL analysis step, what it did is it um, scanned all of the code in the repo. It built out a graph database that understands all the code paths in the project. And then we ran um, 64 standard queries against this repo for certain bad security behaviors. And, you know, that's fully configurable. You can add more, you can take some away. Um, but, you know, that set is what we think of as the most severe and the most precise security vulnerabilities. Um, and so once it finished the analysis, it uploaded a file in a format called Serif. Uh, it's a standard interchange format for static analysis results that went to the cloud and we processed that on our side. And so I can pop in and you can see the security tab. We've got four alerts here um, and we can go and, and have a look at what these are. So, you know, it says that I'm missing some rate limiting here. Um, oh, sure. Yeah. Um, so this route handler is doing database access, but yeah, we don't have any kind of um, rate limiting, which is bad because it could cause a denial of service to your, your backend. Um, 
And this is something that's really easy to miss. Like if you're just developing, you might not be thinking about this in terms of like how could your application be attacked. Exactly. And that's exactly the problem is, you know, these kind of errors are really easy to create, but they're extremely hard to spot. And that's where you want to have a static analysis tool double checking your work in case you make one of these really common mistakes. And so, you know, this has a great example on how I can actually fix that, um, you know, using Express and, you know, adding um, some validation here. And so, you know, every one of our alerts is going to have the same kind of, you know, carefully written guidance from security experts on how to mitigate these vulnerabilities. So it's basically as if I have a security professional ch checking my pull request, only that's automation doing that. Exactly, exactly. And if you're using this, you know, we can prevent a lot of the CVEs that have been added to projects you probably use. Like we scan for um, about a quarter of the recent CVEs for the entire JavaScript ecosystem, which it might sound small, but when, you, when you've seen all the alerts that have come through, it's a ton of vulnerabilities. Um, that you can prevent ever having uh, occur in your code. That sounds fantastic. So in the, it actually, actually also sounded really, really easy to configure and run and just pretty painless for someone to go and add that to their repo. I know you mentioned public repos. Is there a difference for private repos? How do I enable this feature? Yeah, so the product works exactly the same for private repos, except it's a paid product that we sell um, for, for GitHub Enterprise customers. And so if you're doing this on your, your work code, um, definitely have whoever purchases um, or manages your GitHub relationship reach out to the sales team, and we can definitely hook you up with uh, an opportunity to try it out against your private code and see if it's something that you want to purchase. That sounds great. And also, you mentioned kind of the there's a list of partners that we work with to, um, in addition to CodeQL, that you could use for code scanning. Um, what are would you like to highlight any of them? You know, one of the things that I think is so exciting about this, you know, I mentioned we use this standard called Serif to deal with our our interchange between the the tools and the product, and this gives us the opportunity to bring in lots and lots of different analysis tools. The things that are really impactful that we've seen out there are tools that are scanning your containers. So, you know, you could use Anchor or Sneak or um, Aquasec Trivi. You know, all of those are going to scan your Docker files every time you push to see if there are any vulnerabilities in the image that you're running your code in. Um, we've also seen some really great um, compilations of open source tools. So Codacy or Shift Left are bringing together you know, tools that analyze PHP or Python or, you know, a number of other languages, um, just to give you a little bit more defense in depth, because every tool is going to focus on sort of a different opinion about what security is. And so you can stack these sort of things really easily to get, you know, a security analysis system that's going to meet your needs really well. That sounds fantastic. Um, so obviously, we're going to chat, um, share all the links um, in the show notes for where you can sign up, how you can reach out to us about the feature, how you can enable it, and things like that. Um, and thank you, Justin, for bringing this to our customers um, and to open source repos. And thank you for being here with me. Um, this has been pretty awesome. Uh, this has been GitHub Checkout. Please hit the subscribe button for more videos. We're going to bring you some more amazing content in the next few weeks. Bye. Thanks.